Hi everybody. Welcome to the Dobbs Ferry Public Library celebration of the Lunar New Year. I'm Elizabeth Hobson. I'm the library director. I'm so happy you've joined us for the pandemic version of our Cultural Explorers program. Before we start tonight's presentations, I want to share with you a little history of the Cultural Explorers program. The Cultural Explorers program was an idea that originated with two former library trustees, June Wai in the green outline and Sharu Agarwal in the purple one. Their vision was to pre present programs that were driven by our community's variety of cultures and traditions and to share that variety with the rest of the community. Our first event was held two years ago and included the same holidays we're celebrating today. Tet, the New Year celebration in Vietnam, Chen Jie in China, and Tio Lal in Korea. It involved several different community members and included information and samples of arts, food, clothing, and more. Our next event was a celebration of Diwali, the Festival of Lights in India. You see Sharu reading, sharing her collection of beautiful saris and reading a story about them in the upper left corner of this slide. Tiffany Gordon, a newer library trustee, joined the committee and helped organize the Carnival Celebration of West Indian and Caribbean Cultures. And today we're joined by sisters Lan Fan, Mai and Kim Spurlock and their families sharing information about Tet and Vietnamese families. Jing Du, along with her educational company Blended Culture, will tell us about Chen Jie in China. And Clemens Brass shares information about Xiao Lal in Korea. And now, here's our children's librarian, Gina Elbert, to start our program. Hearing from our friend Jing from Blended, who's going to tell us about Chinese New Year. Uh, we're going to follow that up with another story, New Clothes for New Year's Day, uh, which is about the Korean New Year, which is going to introduce us into our presentation by Clemens, a local middle schooler who's going to teach us about Korean New Year. And at the end of all that, we should have a few minutes left over just if somebody has any questions, if you guys did the craft and you want to show off what it looks like, um, or we could read another story. So that's how today's going to go. Uh, with so our, and without further ado, I'm going to turn things over to Lan, Mai, and Kim, who are going to talk about the Vietnamese New Year. And once again, uh, it may be helpful to go to the top right of your screen where it says view and you click on it and you hit speaker view, which is going to center the person who's talking on your screen. So it'll be a little bit easier to see what they're showing you. All right, um, Lan, Mai, and Kim, take it away. Thanks. Guys. Hi everyone. My name is Lan and this is Morgan and Kevin is also here. He's going to say hi real quick. <laughs> hi. So um, as you know, Lunar New Year, um, originated in China, but then all of the other Asian countries like Vietnam and Korea, et cetera, celebrate it as well. But we have, you know, slightly different ways that we celebrate it. In um, Vietnam, we call it Tet. And um, this year is the year of the ox. So I'm going to show you guys a quick video um, before. Just give me one second while I show you guys this. Okay, you guys can see my screen? Okay, I'm gonna show you a quick video. Can you guys hear? Happy New Year. Join us as we explore Lunar New Year, a holiday that dates back thousands of years. Today, we'll travel to China to explore the rich traditions that have been passed down from generations to celebrate the holiday. Another year of good fortune is beginning in China. Fireworks pop high in the sky, dragons dance in the streets, and the city slows down to celebrate Lunar New Year. In Chinese culture, it's the most important time of the year, rooted in traditions and customs passed down through the ages. The celebration lasts for 15 magical days full of family togetherness, delicious food, and good fortune. Today, Lunar New Year is filled with happiness. But according to legend, it didn't start out that way. A long, long time ago in China, there was a big, scary, nasty beast named Nian, whose name means year. He had razor-sharp teeth, giant claws, and a really mean growl. 
Most of the time he lived in the wilderness, but on the darkest night of the year, when the new moon was in the sky, he would sneak into the village and scare everyone in sight, even the animals. People dreaded the new moon for many, many years until a wise man taught them the three things Nian was afraid of. Loud noises, fire, and the color red. The next time Nian came, the villagers fought back. They hit their drums as loud as they could, lit every firecracker they had, and wore the color red from head to toe. Nian ran far away and never came back. After that, the people started celebrating the new moon instead of fearing it. That celebration became a 15-day festival of family, food, and good fortune called Lunar New Year. Every Lunar New Year is always represented by one of 12 animals in the Chinese zodiac, chosen by the Jade Emperor of China centuries and centuries ago. According to legend, a long time ago in China, the Jade Emperor held a great race. The first 12 animals to reach his palace would be the winners, and they would each get a year named after them in their honor. During the race, the ox was winning until he had to cross a rushing river. The rat was right behind him and couldn't swim very well. So the kind ox let the rat ride on his back. As soon as they got to the other side, the rat jumped off and scurried to the finish line to win the race first. That's why the first year in the Chinese zodiac calendar is the year of the rat. 11 other animals reached the palace to create the 12 year cycle of the Chinese zodiac. It's said that the animal your birth year is named after can shape your personality and destiny. You might be honest like a dragon or smart like a monkey. When your animal takes its turn in the zodiac cycle, legend has it that your year will be full of surprises. But no matter which animal you are, everyone is excited to honor these ancient traditions, even in modern New Year celebrations. Horse. Yeah, horse. Today, Lunar New Year brings families together all over the world. In fact, billions of people travel back to their homes and families in China to feast on a delicious reunion dinner with plates and plates of homemade food. Many of the foods like egg rolls, noodles, and shrimp mean something special. Mm. Mm. Egg rolls symbolize wealth for the coming year because they look like bars of solid gold. Chow mein noodles shouldn't be cut because long noodles symbolize health for a long life. Shrimp symbolizes happiness because the Mandarin words for shrimp and smile sound very similar. As part of the festivities, lucky red envelopes called Peng Bao are passed out to children as well as unmarried adults. In Chinese culture, the color red symbolizes luck. In order to receive the red envelopes, well wishes are given to the elders. Thank you, Grandpa. Money is inside each envelope to bring prosperity and good fortune in the coming year. During all 15 days of Lunar New Year, it is a time to reflect on the passing year and celebrate the future. Bright fireworks light up the sky and huge parades line the streets until the final day of the New Year celebration, the Lantern Festival. When thousands of red lanterns glow in the night to bring good fortune to all. No matter where you live, you can join the festivities, whether it's one reunion dinner with your family or 15 days of celebrating togetherness. Lunar New Year. Okay. So, sorry? Vaughn, your screen share, um, real quick, just isn't seem to be working. Do you oh. want. What, oh. did it, didn't I show the whole thing? Hold on. The end of it, um, for some reason, disappeared. If you want to stop okay. sharing the screen and just start again. Someone else shared their screen. Oh, hold on. Okay. I wonder who that was. Okay. It was working. Hold on. Let me. Uh, All right. Well, me... thanks, Mia. I'm going to figure out what's going on. Um, <laughs> I just want to just keep talking and. Okay. Uh, and I can. Uh, hold on. Let me uh, show the next slide. And then I think. Laura I Rothrock actually oh. accidentally shared her screen. If Laura oh, Rothrock. There okay. I got it. Um, Len, it should be good for you now. Okay. Also, awesome. Let me uh, keep that from happening again. From current slide. Let me. Can you guys see my screen now? Awesome. So um, in Vietnam, the Vietnamese celebrate Chinese New Year and it's called Tet. And during Tet, 
um, which is our Vietnamese New Year. We honor our ancestors by creating a ban bang thờ, which is what we call an altar. And we hang our ancestors' photos surrounded by candles, fruits, and incense. It's kind of similar to um, how they do in Mexican culture with the Day of the Dead. And it's all about celebrating our, our, our loved ones who have passed. And we celebrate our ancestors. Um, and it's a really big part of Vietnamese tradition. Nearly every Vietnamese family, um, whether they're Catholic, Buddhist, or whatever religion, or no religion, um, has a family vanta that celebrates their ancestors. Um, and it's just a way to really celebrate um, our past and those that have passed on. So I'm going to pass it on to Mai and Ellie Spurlock. Mai, if you want to uh, unmute I'm yourself. Here. I, I've, I'm unmuted, but I don't see myself. Okay. Ah, here we go. My daughter is more technically proficient. Than me. So um, Ellie, we weren't supposed to cope yet. I'm Mai and this is Ellie. We live in Irvington and Ellie's going to start off by talking about our family tree and then we'll go on to explain our altar a little bit. Okay, so we need to look back. Sorry, bit of a techie problem. You want to show your screen? Uh, or the, my screen? Uh, I mean, I'm on. I don't know. Are, can you? Oh, guys... we can see you. Okay. So Ellie and I are in our red today for good luck and gold for good fortune. And then Ellie, why don't you talk about? Sure. Sure. Our altar, and then we have our ancestors on my mom's side, and ancestors on my dad's side. And what project? This was for your uh, Springhurst family tree project. Yeah. And then you can see here we also have framed photos of all of our ancestors, and then the traditional Vietnamese elements of flowers, fruit, spring rolls, and a Buddha, as well as the Chinese god of good fortune. And Ellie, do you want to talk a little bit more about some of the other elements? Um, well, with food, um, you can personalize it, so we got the candle and friend, uh, cookies for my mom's, uh, grandfather, because, uh, he loved them, and then we got some pastry for all the women, and then we got some whiskey for all the For grandpa, our Ukrainian yeah. great-grandpa, because we have a lot of European as well as Vietnamese ancestry. So we try to reflect that in the offerings and put out things that we know our family would like. We also have the traditional uh, five fruits in various colors. Um, and we also will now light the incense. Ellie, what are you doing? Like this. Mm -hmm. So these scents are supposed to go up to please the ancestors. All of this is to sort of honor to them and and help us picture them very satisfied as they think about all of their descendants who remember them during this special time. And Ellie will show you how we do the traditional, or at least in our family, the kowtow. I don't know if it's traditional. And again, because we are such a cross section of Vietnamese, Ukrainian, German, English, and Scottish ancestry in the US, we, we bring in elements of both. So I don't think there's really a wrong way to do it. Uh, it's just sort of elements from our personal family history. And that is our altar. I'm going to mute myself now. Awesome. And so Kim and Vivi Spurlock are going to go into the next section. And I'm going to share my screen too as soon as they say hi. Okay. Hi, guys. Um, Happy New Year, everyone. I was, while my sister was talking, I was just thinking about how our aunt used to always, she's very pithy, I'm our ready. aunt always said, said that in Vietnam, we believe in the dead and in the West, we believe in death. And she thought that was a very clear sort of con contrast in beliefs and that's something you know, that has to do with the ancestral altar. Um, so, you know, we basically did the same thing my sister did and um, piggybacking on my sister's altar, we just created our family tree so that Vivi can start learning her roots um, as we do the Tet celebration. Um, yeah. Oh, and also, um, if you guys want to create your own altar, um, now would be the time to scavenge your hunt around your house. The basics, you know, you just need a table and some photographs of your um, 
of your forefathers and some candles. I mean, it's the most basic. If you want to bring in some food, you can do that too. We like to do treats that um, we know that our relatives liked when they were here. Um, you can do that. If you have incense and fruit lying around, you can do that too. Flour is always a great idea, as Mr. just said. And then this, I wanted to show you this. This is something we picked up. This is a um, banquet. It's a, it's a, this is a really big one. This is a rice cake um, wrapped in banana leaves and it has pork belly and mung beans inside and you can slice it and fry it or steam it. Um, and sometimes you put that out with chopsticks so that our grandparents can enjoy them while the incense burns down and then we can eat them too. So, so I guess there was two options, right, Kim? They could either do an altar or they could do the cherry blossom family tree, right? Or the cherry blossom family tree, that's right. So you just need some construction paper. Let me see, that's right. Markers, color pencils, and some photos. Um, you could also just write their names um, on paper and cut them out and put them up as well if you don't have your photos ready. Yeah, so in a second, I'm going to play the music and we're literally going to do a scavenger hunt where you're going to go into the house, try to get five. If you're going to do the altar, pick five things. So it could be fruit, plant. You know, if you don't have a photo of your ancestors, you could write their name, find a place to put it on the table. And if you want to do the cherry blossom activity, um, paper, pen, and you're just basically going to do a family tree and like either pictures or names of your ancestors. Is that right, Kim? Anything else I need to add? Um, I think that's good. I think that's, those are the basics. Okay. Know. So we have about a little, little bit less than five minutes and we can go on the scavenger hunt or do the cherry blossom activity now. And I'm going to play some Vietnamese music while you guys do your scavenger. Five, five things. Okay. Scavenger hunt, go find your five things or do the cherry blossom activity. Five, five things if you want to do one. Why do they have to go find things to put on their altar? What do we have?
Are we done? Yeah. Oh. Good. I think we're up with the five minutes. Um, and I think that concludes our portion of a set celebration. I hope you guys were able to do your altar and or your cherry tree. And this is how you say Happy New Year's in Vietnamese. Uh, let me show you real quick. Do you guys see the, it's chúc mừng năm mới. So if you see a Vietnamese person, the way you say Happy New Year's in Vietnamese is chúc mừng năm mới. Um, thank you everyone. Uh, Kim, um, Mai, I don't know if you want to say goodbye too. Goodbye guys, chúc mừng năm mới. Happy New Year. All right, Bye. thanks so much. Guys, um, Lon, if you'd just like to, or Lon, if you'd just like to mute yourself now that you're yes. done. Um, thanks so much, everyone. I hope you guys had a good time making your altars and everything. I was um, learning about the, um, the, the fun fact and the really interesting idea of how in one side of the world, it's about um, good and one side of the world, it's about death. Um, so actually, just like we had at the beginning of the presentation, we're going to learn a little bit about the dragon Nian. So this is just one version of the story. So there are, you know, different ways of telling the story. And this particular one is by Virginia Lowe Hagen. May, ah, you know, May hated springtime. Springtime meant Nian was hungry. Nian was the fierce dragon that used to rule the land until a magical warrior put a spell on him. Because of the spell, Nian was forced to hide in a mountain under the sea. There we go. Um, but every spring, Nian came out to fill his empty stomach. He especially loved to eat little boys and girls. There he is. Um, but May was scared. Her whole village was scared. They could hear the rumbling of Nian's stomach. That's how they knew winter was over and spring was coming. So there's our dragon. He's hiding in his mountain under the sea. <coughs> Excuse me. The night before the first day of spring, the magical warrior visited May in her dreams. The warrior said to May, hundreds of years have passed and a new year is coming. Nian's power grows stronger and my spell grows weaker each year. I can no longer keep him in the mountain under the sea. You must defeat Nian. You must do this in 15 days or Nian will be free forever. My cane will help you. May asked, why me? You were born in the year of the golden dragon. This is your destiny. And there we have the warrior ghost and we have May in her bed. <clears throat> when May woke up the next morning, the magical warrior's walking cane was next to her pillow. May, Mama yelled, wake up. Nian is on his way. We must flee and hide. <sighs> Mama herded the animals into the barn. Hurry, Nian will devour anything in his way. He'll eat our crops and our livestock. With his large mouth, he can swallow many villagers in one bite. May had lost her father and little brother to Nian's mighty jaws the year before. May helped Mama hide, but then she remembered the warrior's cane and ran to get it. I'll be right back. May stopped in her tracks. She heard a terrible roar and smelled a terrible smell. Nian made his way toward May. She could see his sharp teeth and his claws. She could see his long, slimy tongue. May grabbed the cane. She also grabbed a cooking pot and banged it with the cane. She yelled, Nian, go away. You are not wanted here. Nian covered his ears with his big paws. He didn't like the noise. This gave May a wonderful noisy idea. She yelled to the other villagers, make lots of noise. The villagers obeyed. They banged pots, they, banged, they clanged pans, they hollered, they hooted, they threw firecrackers at Nian. 
Nian fled back to his mountain under the sea. They managed to fight him off. So for five days, the villagers were happy. They drummed their drums and gonged their gongs. They whooped and hollered. They laughed loudly, really loudly, just in case Nian was listening. The villagers thanked May by giving her a beautiful red silk robe. May was wearing the flowing red robe when she heard screams and roars. Nian had returned even hungrier and angrier than before. She, he had packed his ears with cotton to block out the noise. May had, didn't have time to run. She threw a lantern at Nian. She covered herself with her red robe. Nian shielded his eyes from the redness of the robe and the brilliance of the fire. He backed away in fear. That gave May a wonderfully bright idea. She said to the villagers, wear your brightest reds and shine your brightest lights. The villagers obeyed with all those lights. They wore their reddest, reddest clothes. They hung red banners on their windows and doors. They placed bright lanterns everywhere. May cut a piece of her red robe and made a flag, which she attached to the magical cane. She, shoved, she waved it to shoo Nian away. Nian fled back to his mountain under the sea. For five days, the villagers were delighted. They dyed all their clothes red. They burned fires all day and all night, just in case Nian was watching. On the 10th night, the magical warrior again appeared in May's dreams. There he is. Nian is coming back and he wants revenge. Be very careful. Remember, you only have five more days to defeat him. May knew she had been lucky the first two times. This time, she needed a plan. So she came up with a wonderfully tricky idea. May took all the food in her house, put it in red bags and stuffed them into a scarecrow. She dressed the scarecrow in her old clothes. She placed the scarecrow in front of her door. She told the villagers to do the same. The villagers obeyed. And at the last minute, May shoved a warrior's cane inside the scarecrow. On the 15th day, Nian returned. He had covered his eyes with long eyelashes and packed his ears with cotton. The dragon stormed into the village. His jaws chomped on the scarecrows that had been filled with food. But when he got to May's scarecrow, he choked on the cane. The cane then magically turned into a leash. The magical warrior from May's dreams suddenly appeared. He captured Nian with the leash. Nian is conquered. He'll never be evil again. You brought us good luck and good fortune, May. You fulfilled your destiny. Now I'll fulfill mine. The magical warrior mounted Nian and together they toned and turned into a stone statue in the middle of the village. The villagers were overjoyed that Nian was defeated and they held a party in May's honor. Uh, they put food offerings in front of their houses. They lit lanterns, they threw firecrackers. They dressed in red. Some villagers dressed up as Nian and did a dance. They celebrated a new year without fear of the dragon. Gongxi, Gongxi, congratulations, congratulations. The villagers heralded their heroine, May. Nian never warned, harmed the villagers again. From then on, at the start of every spring, the villagers celebrated May chasing at Nian. They made a lot of noise. They wore a lot of red. They lit a lot of lanterns. And every spray, spring, May gave a food offering to the statue of Nian and the magical warrior, just in case. The end. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that rendition of the tale of Nian. Um, I'm going to turn things over now to Jing and Esther, who are going to teach us about Chinese New Year, which has a lot to do with Nian, as we've already learned a little bit. All right, guys, take it away. Okay. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm going to do this uh, quick storytelling with um, Esther, Miss Esther. Esther, can you say hi to everyone? Is Esther here? Hmm. Oh, hi, hi. Um, Esther, can you unmute yourself? Yes, yeah, so you have to unmute yourself. Okay, so I'm gonna share um, some facts about Chinese New Year, because uh, you already heard a lot of things about Chinese New Year. You heard about Nian, you heard about um, the origin of Chinese New Year. So my question here for you is what is the most popular color of the Chinese New Year? Who can give me an answer? Raise your hand, please. 
Um, I don't, I didn't call your name. I'm sorry, Lan, can you ask her to, to answer? Morgan, yeah. Morgan. Hi, Morgan. Brad. Red, you are very correct. Good job. So red. And today, me and Esther are gonna let you know top five red celebrities. So what are the celebrities? What are the celebrities? Am I a celebrity? Celebrities is a, a superstar. So we have five top red superstars during the Chinese New Year. Let's see what are they. And then Esther, actually, she, her family um, went to abroad, uh, a country called Indonesia, right, Esther? Oh, I'm from the Philippines. Oh, Philippines, Philippines sorry. Yeah, Philippines. Uh, so long, long time ago. So she actually, a Chinese uh, descendant, but lived in another country long, yes. long time ago. But she, her family also celebrated Chinese New Year. Uh, it's a tradition. So let's see if any traditions in China different from her in her current country, but she lives in America right now, but her family all come from uh, Philippines. Okay, let's see. The number five, red lanterns, red lanterns. Oh, you can see her screen has red lanterns. And um, I'm sure if you registered with the library, you're gonna receive like a small package with the red lanterns. You can make your red lanterns at home. But uh, let me show you a big picture. See this guy? So he hiding up the red lanterns, a real big ones in front of his door before Chinese New Year. Why? Who can tell me why? Okay, um, Morgan, again, you. <laughs> because they don't want to miss Chinese New Year. Morgan, I think I know you. You were my, in my class before. We have an after a school culture class. I think she is in my class. Okay, yes. Um, yes or no, it's for Chinese New Year, but because Miss Gina just said, it's the monster called a what? Nian, right? And I then Nian actually, Nian is not afraid of everything. However, Nian afraid of one thing, a few things. One of the a few things is red. So people hunt up the red things to scare away Nian. Okay, so this is why we use red lanterns and hunt in front of our doors. And Esther, um, can I ask you a question? So. Is Philippine uh, a country hunting red lanterns? Yes, we do. But then uh, red our red lantern is actually the eight-sided lanterns that uh, that we use, not the rounded one, but uh -huh. it's the uh, eight-sided that that says on each side that will says uh, different sayings or oh, good luck to you, good okay. health. That kind of thing. So it's not like a one in front of the door, right? Mm -hmm. We okay, we so have two. different ones. Yeah, we yeah, have two I mean, on both sides. Yes, but it's red color, right? Red color with a red okay. tassel, and uh -huh. some of it has a uh, light inside that you can turn on at night. And oh yes, yeah, yeah, those are are able to turn on. In yeah, the, turn on the light at night. Very bright. Because, yeah, we hang it on uh, New Year for. Two, at least two months, one month or two okay. months before we turn it off. Yeah, because Chinese people so in love with the red lantern. So after Chinese New Year, okay, today is the, the first day. The first day. Ten days later, we have a festival called the Lantern Festival, just hanging up different colors of lanterns, different varieties is a big festival. And then during the Lantern okay. Festival, uh, we always eat the sweet bowls sticky bowls. Uh, you know, remember that every holidays in China associated or related to some type of food. So Chinese New Year, everybody knows we're eating what? Dumplings, dumplings, and or whole fish, of course, uh, because whole fish means extra, means everything plenty, okay? So we eat whole fish, and then uh, 15 days later, we celebrate Latin Festival, we eat the sweet uh, rice bowls, stinky rice bowls. Okay, so here come our number four right things. What she's doing there? What she's doing there? 
Can anyone see? I see Morgan raise her hand again. Let me see if there's anyone else, okay? Let's see. Um, hmm. No one wants to try? Okay, Morgan, please. Hanging up bread. What she's doing? She's hanging up bread to scare away the dragon. Yeah, she is pasting something, isn't it, in front of her door? Like, like I said, Nian really, really afraid of red. So when people all inside of the their door, their gate, what they wants to put outside was meaning to scare away of Nian. So here come our number four red superstar is paste red for the new year in China. In Chinese, we call Tie Nian Hong. Tie means paste. Nian means year, new year. Hong is red, Tie Nian Hong, okay? So including a few things. Red rhyming uh, couplets, you know, see this? The, the, um, the long one, the vertical long one, and then write a full square banners, which is doing some um, family. They put it in reverse because they want to say full arrived. In China, arrived means dao Dao also means reverse. So they do reverse way. And then, or they do write window paper cuts. If you look at Miss Gina's background, she has really nice <laughs> paper cuts. That's what we hang our window, okay? So it's very nice. So Tian Nian Hong is one of our biggest tradition. Look at these kids. They're doing, having, really having fun to do all this, uh, um, banners or the paper car cuts. And those on the left hand, the picture showing you, we have so many red things we can hum uh, in front of our gate to a scare away Nian. Okay, here comes our number three. Nian, one of the things Nian afraid, not just red, but also the sound of the firecrackers, fireworks. So the third thing, the red, is fireworks to scare away Nian. And you know, if you go to Chinatown during New Year, you will see so many things sold there. Those are fireworks. And this is after people fire the fireworks. This is in Chinatown people doing fireworks and then do the lying dance. Okay, so it's really, really celebrating the holiday in a right, very, very noisy way. Yes, I see. Do you do that in Philippines, Esther? Yes, we do that too because at home uh, in the Philippines or Manila, big the main city in the Philippines, we have the oldest Chinatown. Okay. Of the world of the country. in the Philippines, yeah. Oh. And then uh, we do have uh, the dragon dance. We mm -hmm. do have the lion dance from the mm -hmm. kung fu clinics. We have oh. quite a few Kung Fu clinics that will do the lion dance. The martial arts uh, studio, they provide yeah. the lion dance, right? The lion dance, yeah. And then yes. they will be going to uh, businesses, uh, front of the business uh, uh, people. And mm -hmm. then after the lion dance, mm -hmm. the, the owner of the business will bring out Ang Pao for the- Ang Pao. Yeah, for the people, for the people who are uh, doing the, the lion dance. And oh, they, yeah, to, yeah. Yeah, to appreciate their to effort. Appreciate, yeah. And yeah, then it's a lot of work doing line dances. Line dances. <laughs> mm -hmm. it Especially is, the it person. Is very fun, yeah. yeah. So there, each lion need two per people, one yes. in front yes. holding one the head. Head. One is actually have to bend all the time to support the tail area. So yeah. it's, a, it's a lot of work for the yeah. lion. And, uh, and people think that the front, uh, person is the hardest to to do because it's the heavy and yes. you have to do more moving yes but actually truthfully it's the the person in the back because he is bent over and yeah. he has to make sure that he follows he follows the head the yes, so, exactly. yeah exactly so it's a lot of work for the tail mm. for the tail part person because yeah, he has, it's he really has fun to, sometimes yeah, when they do lying down. downs i heard, i mm -hmm. i actually saw they put the cabbage, you know, into uh -huh. their mouths, let yeah. them to eat. So they gobbled the lettuce or the, the cabbage. It was really and, fun. Yeah, and even when they are accepting the ang pao, 
they have to accept it through the mouth as if the the lion is eating the ang pao. Okay. Actually, they will open up the mouth and then the hand will come out to get the ang pao. But ah. it is looking like well, we're going to talk the about ang pao later. Yes. And as you just mentioned about hong bao, okay? Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> I okay. gave it away. <laughs> yeah, okay. So next one, number two. So what do you see in this picture? What do you see in this picture, guys? Thumbs up if you know, if you notice. No one see anything? You have to see something. <laughs> what do you see? Oh, um, Juliet, could you tell me? What do you see the color? Red, yes, but what there, what, what's red? Except for the red lantern and the what? <laughs> what? What do you say? Who do you see? It's a person. Kids, she said kids. Kids. That's a kid. And a grandma. A grandma. And then the and dad and mommy. Yeah. So what the... Similarities on this picture. So red stuff. Red stuff. Oh, okay. So thank you, Juliet. Uh, so they're wearing red. Okay, they're wearing red. So there are two layers of meanings. Why? One, people wear red clothes on the day or on the during Chinese New Year celebration days. Usually five to 15 days, depend on where you're coming from. Uh, if you live in a bra, like me and Aster, we only celebrate probably one day, right? But people in China, they celebrate the whole week. Um, they're wearing red, uh-huh. And then the second was people who have their zodiac sign. So Lan just to present this year, it was ox year, right? So um, people, including me, is my zodiac year, which oh. means I'm gonna receive a lot of a challenge from the zodiac signs. Um, so I have to wear something red the whole year round. I could have a red, red belt. I could wear red socks, bracelet. I'm showing you in a bra red bracelet, red bracelet. Okay, and then or red clothes, or red scarf, or red belt red purse, anything red to help me um, experiencing a smooth and safe year. Okay, that's that's my year. Okay, so uh, Chinese New Year also about the family reunion. Okay, like Thanksgiving, like Christmas, family reunion. So make sure you go to see your parents. See, my parents are still in China. I can't really see them, but I using social media to say hello, happy new year to them. But Esther, she has a big family over here. So yes. she had a really nice reunion there. <laughs> they are just Esther, my new new family, family, right? And nephews and my children. <laughs> ah, so and which one is your children? They're in the back or the, oh, the, the back. Back one in the back, yeah. Wow, you have a big family. Yeah, when we gather, usually we will gather, I call it the uh, meeting of the clan, which we oh. do on the Chinese New Year, it's a meeting of the clan. Everybody, my brothers and sisters, of the 10 of us, eight uh -huh. of us are in America. So who is that woman on the left? Yeah, that's my, my eldest sister. Because oh. when, yeah, my mother used to do it uh, every year, but when, uh, after she passed away, my mm -hmm. sister took over the tradition. So okay. she is the one who will make all the ang paos for everybody, including me. All the sisters okay. and brothers, all the nieces and nephews will get ang pao on oh, uh, Chinese New Year. And then okay. we, we gather and have our uh, noodles for long noodles. life. Oh, your and food is noodles. It, yeah, and the noodles, are, actually my husband was telling me the meaning of the noodles when you eat noodles in a, in a Chinese New Year is like it's a rope that binds the whole family together. Okay. Keep everybody together. Oh, and tie then, everyone together. Got yeah, it. Tie That's everybody together so that we will be close to each other. And, yeah. Uh, you know, it's like a close family meet. 
And yeah, I want to add one thing uh, uh -huh. to everyone because China is so big, right? So if you are Chinese, you're celebrating Chinese New Year, maybe in a different way. And people from North eating dumplings, people from South maybe eating noodles. So uh -huh. it's very, very different. And, and also, yeah, and the noodles actually signifies long life too. Because oh, yeah, long life. Yes, birthdays, that's what, on birthdays, we will have the noodles, yeah. yeah, for long life. And we for sure will have uh, boiled eggs and yeah. uh, meatballs. They are all, uh, you know, round things that will yeah, give you but, like, the whole year. Oh, it means full, means complete. Yeah, the yeah. Thing. The, yeah. I it's got it. Egg. Okay. Thank you. I uh, here comes our final number one. So you heard a lot of this already, but who knows which one I'm going to talk about the right thing. You heard multiple times just now. Who knows? Can I can I call Clemens? Do you know? No. Okay. And uh, who wants to say it? <laughs> Who wants to try? No one. Morgan, do you want to give a try or? What is the last one? Is red and you see it all the time. But <laughs> oh, look at Esther. She is showing you. Yeah. Red envelope. Yes, red envelope. We also got a home bow. Yeah, I was saying. Yeah, so kids receiving that, I heard today, actually, 15 years old below receiving Hong Bao, 15 years above, don't. But you know what? In China, everybody receiving Hong Bao. Even me, I'm, I'm very old, and my mother still gives me Hong Bao. <laughs> so, yes, so Hong Bao is, a, is a, the, the more the merrier. <laughs> okay, and this is the Aster's uh, um, Hong Bao um, display, right, Aster? Yes. And uh, I made the origami. I made the origami uh, axe that yeah. uh, that uh, has a pocket there. So I put mm -hmm. ang pao inside. This is for my son. So I put ang pao inside the 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 axe, the origami the axe. axe. Yeah. Wow. We have to learn someday how to yeah. make this axe. Yeah. When we have a time, we can uh, we can do the demonstration. It's yes. uh, actually it's an intermediate, so for the big, uh, for the older kids or even yeah. young ones who are uh, who love to do origami, mm -hmm. I will be able to teach. Hopefully, one day we can come together and do yeah. it together. Yeah, Esther, can you show them the little round thing nearby you on your left hand? Oh, uh, this one. Audience? Yeah. yeah, this one. Uh, it's amazing. It's, it's like almost a firework. That's the reason why I put it up here because it can symbolize like a firework because it's different color. You just keep on turning it around. This one takes about six hours to make. This one, see? Yep, it's amazing. Yeah, and okay. it is made out of 136 pieces of paper. Mm -hmm. and, uh, okay. and then this one is just a ball. Okay. No, no glue needed, but then it, 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 it almost looks like a firework too because of the color. And, oh. I, put, and I put some uh, flowers here because uh, Chinese New Year's coincide with the spring festival. So we have all the new flowers coming out and kind of things. So I put up some flowers too. This one we can- That's beautiful. Yeah, kid can do this too. Yeah. Very nicely, very nice, uh, different color for uh, springtime. And uh, I did make some, uh, this uh, symbolizes uh, the chi the gold nuggets. The Chinese, the ancient- The Chinese uh, ancient the Chinese nuggets. gold nuggets, yes. yeah. Yes. Yeah, this kind of thing. So I put, I can, uh, I, I put the, the gold nuggets too inside the cow, inside the ax for, uh, for good luck. Okay, okay. <laughs> that's really great. Uh, so I think that's that's it for our for our um, introduction. And then happy um, uh, happy a wonderful the year of ox. Thank you. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year.
Thanks, guys. You guys did a really great job. That was really interesting. Um, I was happy to show off my banner. Thank you so much for Jane for giving it to me. Um, I'm going to go ahead and real quick read our Korean New Year story and then hand it off to Clements so we have plenty of time for his presentation. So our um, story is New Clothes for New Year's Day. And it's by, and I might pronounce this wrong, and if I do, I'm sorry, it's by Hyun, Hyun Jo, Hyun jo Bae. Um, but it's a very, it's a nice, simple story about getting dressed for New Year's. So today is New Year's Day. It's a new year, it's a new day, and it's a new morning. It's the first day for the beginning of everything. The new sun hasn't shown up, and there are new clouds in the sky. I hope we have new snow, too. But the very best new things of all new things are my new skirt and jacket. Uh, mother made me new clothes for New Year's Day. Aren't they beautiful? A crimson silk shirt, a rainbow striped jacket, de delicate socks embroidered with flowers, a hair ribbon of red and gold. I could hardly sleep last night. But today I finally get to wear my wonderful new clothes, finally. Stretch on tiptoes to reach the hanger. Ah. Hold on one, hold one side in each hand. Then arms spread wide, wrap the crimson skirt around, and take the sash, tie a knot. That's the first part of my outfit. One after the other, put on the cotton socks with their red flower embroidery. Make sure the designs are in the right place. Oof. Whoops, we got our stuff. Now we're all dressed up and we're still got a couple more things to go. But look at this, this beautiful room that she's in. Arms go in carefully, one at a time into the rainbow striped jacket. Pull the right side first and cover it with the left. It may be tied tightly, how pretty, or left untied. Oh. Put a hand, headband on over neatly braided hair. In front of the mirror, fasten the hair ribbon of red and gold. Ah, it's not easy. We're going to take a look in the mirror to see how it looks. Now we're going to twirl around in the whole outfit in our room. Time for the flowered shoes, a gift from father and the warm furry vest with the gold decorations, plus a special winter hat to help keep warm. Put on the new shoes, the new flower embroidered shoes, goes with her socks, the dazzling new shoes. They fit so perfectly. Oh, here we go, our next step. Hang a charm and a lucky bag on the jacket string. It's good luck. black satin winter hat. Put on the black satin winter hat. Everything is new from head to toe. A new day, a new year, a new day, a new morning, new clothes. We start the year with new things. New things for the year older me. Time to go. <gasps> new snow for New Year's Day. <gasps> the perfect day to make New Year's calls and to wish every year. The end. So might not be snowing right now, but we do have a lot of snow on the ground for New Year's Day, and I think more is coming. Um, so with that, I hope you guys like that second story. I'm turning it over to our friend Clemens, who's going to teach us about Korean New Year. Okay, um, is this working? Um, is this working? Can everybody hear me and stuff? We can hear you. Oh, okay. Uh, good. So, um, my name is Clemens Brass, and I am going to be giving a presentation on Solai, or the Korean Lunar New Year. Or the Korean Lunar New Year. Before I explain traditions of Solal, I would like to explain the Lunar New Year. Oh. 
the sun, moon, and earth all orbit each other. Every time the earth turns around on its axis, it's called a day. Every time the moon completes its orbit around the earth, it's called a month. And every time the earth completes its orbit around the sun, it is called a year. A lunar month is not the same as one of our calendar months, which is why a year can have 12 or 13 lunar months. So we have two calendars, lunar calendars and solar calendars. We use a solar calendar. It's only based on the sun. And our months are no longer connected to the moon because it was too complicated. Many cultures still use lunar calendars, which where the months are lunar months. And, and even some holidays, like Easter, use, use lunar calendars, which is why Easter moves around. The Korean Lunar New Year is called Solal. One lunar month begins at the new moon and ends at the new moon. And the lunar new year begins with the second new moon after the winter solstice. Winter solstice is the shortest day of the year. Winter solstice is when the Earth's axis points away from the sun, and it is on December 21st. So Solal is a family tradition, which means sometimes days before, everyone will get into a bus, train, or car, which makes everything very crowded. And they do this to go to their grandparents or uncles or aunts or great grandparents' place. So I am currently wearing a hanbok, which is traditional clothing in for uh, solal and other celebrations like marriages and chusok. It is, they are normally bright and strong colors and just for extra emphasis, I have like two dolls which are wearing handbooks. The hat is called a gut, and it's no longer worn really in modern times, but like it was worn like a long time ago. So on Sola morning, chai, you do chaya. Chaya is a ritual where you honor your ancestors. A table, oh, like you see this one or this one, that's covered with food is prepared. And then you and your whole family perform two deep bows to show your respect and stuff for your ancestors. Sebe is another thing where you say, where you bow down in front of your um, aunts, uncles, parents, grandparents and say sebok mani badaseo which is wishing them good fortune and help for the new year after that they will give you you see right here the grandfather giving the guy their money uh, envelope filled with money when in korea the age system is different from the u.s you turn older every solar so instead of turning older on your birthday, you turn older, everyone turns older together on Solal. Tukuk is a traditional Korean rice cake soup that is eaten for breakfast and marks you as getting one year older. I actually had one this morning, so I am, <laughs> yeah. Um, it is a main part, but it is a, like first thing you're supposed to eat, but because it's a family tradition, everyone has brought extra food and it's almost a feast. Yunari is a hey, piata. Yunari is a board game where you all get together and it's it's just a normal board game, but the only twist is that instead of dice, you use four sticks. Prima And they choose how many steps you take on the board it's the very fun game even if you barely know how to like read it and i really like it
Jaggy is a number game, but it's its rules are much less clean cut. It you juggle a bag thingy with your feet, and there are no rules really. It's just that you juggle it with the inside of your foot, like right here. And most of the time, people wear shoes, but not always. So now we will learn how to make a jaggy. The things you will need for this are four quarters, a pair of scissors, one rubber band, and a paper towel. Um, if, if you want to do this, please get the stuff now. And it's okay if you don't have this stuff because you can make it out of anything else and it's very easy to make. So, when is everyone, has everyone got their stuff now and is ready to make it? Uh, okay, so the first step is to take your paper towel and fold it in half. You know, the side with the fold right here, sort of like grab it like this. And then take your other hand and sort of start chopping it and you shouldn't cut your fingers just like stop where your fingers are and you don't even need to touch them just go all the way across like this and you just all the way across i'm going to wait a bit for you to finish this so after you you do this you should unfold it and put it down take your four quarters and put it on a pile at the end of uh, like middle of the page so in between all of the like cuts and stuff uh, but and in the like middle of it this way but at the end of it this way so and then start folding it like this where you Take it over and just keep on folding it like this until you get something like this. After you do this, just take these bits and fold them over and use your rubber band to tie it and you are done. It may not um, just please note that when you're doing Jeggy, it's actually normally done on, so, oh, it might hurt your feet. But in my personal record is five, you can try to beat that, but that's the end of my presentation. Ah, oh, whoops. <laughs> well, great job, Clemens. Thank you so much for your presentation. I really like making the jeggy. I had to use a piece of paper because that's what I had nearby, but I will try it with a paper towel um, later when I get home. Uh, so we do have a few minutes left. Does anybody have any questions about any of our presentations? Uh, Clemens, do you have a made jianzi? Um, can you show, show us how to play it? Do you have a, a pre-made one? Um, no, I don't. Oh, okay. Uh, um, I have this one, but I'm not very good at it. And yeah, I, it was hard, right? Yeah, you just take it. And... <laughs> so, um, well, yeah, you're already doing better than I would be. So <laughs> it looks like a lot of fun. For showing us buttons. Anybody's ever played hacky sack? Half a year ago, I could do um, five. <laughs> I have a question. Yeah. We'll be learning. Will we be learning to make the origami or no? Okay. We're not going to have time for that now. Well, we do actually have time. I could pull up the video if you want. We have a video that you can watch to learn how to do it. Uh, I put the link to it in the chat if you saw that. Um, but if you guys are interested, I can also just pull it up. I'm going to pull the video, video quickly. Do you want me to? Um, yeah, I mean, I already have it up, so I can. Okay. 
um let's yeah let's if you guys have picked up your craft kit and you want to learn how to make it i can show you the video and it's something you can watch on your own as well um here we go this is our friend jenny put this together Well, thank you for making that video for us, Jing. Um, again, if you want to watch that video, again, you can watch it at tinyurl.com slash oxpuppet. And that takes you straight to that video. And the tinyurl.com is just a way of shortening it so you don't have like a whole long URL that you have to copy and paste and it's easy to remember. Uh, do we have any other questions from anyone? Hey, Gina, it's Elizabeth. I just wanted to talk to all the families that are out there um, and just let you know that I really appreciate all of your attention here and the people that volunteered. And for the people that are in the audience, if I want you to know that I'm collecting little video clips from people about what their library means to them because we're going to talk to our state representatives and tell them how important libraries are so that they continue to fund us. So if anybody wants to take a little video clip and say why you love your library, you can send it to me or to Miss Gina. Um, I, <laughs> I, my my uh, email got a little messed up there and I, and I spelled Gina's last name wrong. But the emails are, I'll, I'll write them again in the chat. If you want to send me a little video clip, it can just be very short and just say, why do you like your library? I'd love to hear from you, okay? Awesome, thank you, Elizabeth. Um, so we have a couple minutes left. So I think um, it might be best just to go ahead and wrap up because we don't quite have time for anything else unless anyone has any other questions that they'd like to um yeah uh laura's family what do you guys what's um going on first thing i want to say is my name is not laura rothrock my name is landon okay landon that's my mom's name all right. I want to show you my baby brother. I'm going to go get him. Okay. Hey, where are you? Where are you? Awesome. Well, you know, the Lunar New Year is all about family, so this is perfect. 
And then after we meet Landon's brother, it might be a bit of time to wrap up. But this is a very nice note to end on. First of all, that is not a question. Okay. <laughs> That's all right. You want to so, say Happy New Year? Happy New Year. Okay. So. <laughs> happy New Year. And I hear it's somebody's birthday today, Grace or Grace's family. Well, happy birthday to you. Just, just move on, okay? Move on. All right, we got Landon's back. He's not coming. He is apparently taking a nap. Okay, he's, he, yeah, he's coming now. I don't oh, get okay. it. Wow. Hi. Hi. Brother. Hi. Right, Happy Newsy. Happy Lunar New Year. Hey. Hi. Hi, Asta. What's his name, Landon? Um, his name's Reed. Reed. Hi, Reed. Hi, Reed. This is my dad. Okay. All right, now let other people say something, okay? Okay. Awesome. Wait, how do I go off, off mute? Okay. I, will, I can do it for you, Landon. Don't, you don't have to touch anything. There we go. Okay. Well, thanks everybody for coming. Um, oh, I see Clemens got his uh, red envelope today just now. Congratulations, Clemens. Uh, and so did you, um, Bye. daughter, who's, I'm sorry, I forgot your name. Morgan. <laughs> Morgan. Yeah, Morgan. Nice. Congratulations. Um, that's a great picture you got there, Landon, and everyone in as well, and Kim's family. Okay, well, thanks everybody so much for coming. I am going to, I think, call it a night and we're going to have a meeting. We'll see well, you, you at our next celebration. Happy Lunar New Year. Happy Chinese New Year. Bye. 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 B